becomes very clear that um, uh, of the position of the judge, and one can well understand why the government uh, might be fearful of uh, further uh, legal intervention in these matters, uh, given that, uh, as I'll deal with uh, somewhat momentarily in my remarks, um, the impugned section of the legislation that refers to just the bargaining, just those matters, is in fact included in the legislation that we have uh, before us uh, uh, in the legislature. So uh, the court, after a careful, analytical, rational, and legal analysis of the previous provisions, uh, struck them down. Uh, and yet, here in this legislation, what's what proposed is that the very same provisions, in, in many cases, the sub uh, paragraphs are identical to those uh, in the legislation that was struck down by the court. So uh, I'm not quite sure uh, what the strategy of the government is at or why they have chosen to uh, disregard, apparently, the decision of the court. Uh, clearly, they've uh, a vast array of uh, legal talent that they can draw in the uh, Ministry of the Attorney General. There's legislative drafters, and doubtlessly the minister has received uh, legal advice on the the legal peril or not of implementing these provisions, or maybe they just don't care. Maybe uh, that's a risk they're prepared to run, notwithstanding what the court has said. They're prepared to uh, reenact those provisions uh, and uh, and um, uh, find some comfort in the position that these are allegedly temporary, although that's not included in the legislation. Um, the government has, I believe, stated uh, that as of uh, 20, July 1st, 2013, teachers would have the right to bargain class size and composition, but this particular bill doesn't guarantee that. So um, I, I'm not, again, it's difficult to speculate. It's not something that the minister addressed uh, directly in his remarks. Uh, but uh, it, it is rather striking that after waiting, and one can uh, understand uh, the position of uh, teachers, after waiting from, for uh, legislation that was uh, 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 passed in uh, 10 years ago, uh, and uh, eventually makes its way to uh, uh, yeah, the courts, uh, is... Uh, conclusively and, and in detail examined by the courts, and those provisions are struck down as violating the fundamental law of the land, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which uh, I would expect uh, everyone here, uh, unless there are a, a few uh, who don't support the Charter, but uh, there's a separate argument for that, I suppose. But for the most part, as legislators, uh, we're obliged to respect uh, the, the laws of the land, and certainly the Charter of Rights and Freedoms um, is uh, the supreme law of the land. It's, a, it's a, a legal instrument against which legislation is measured and assessed by the courts, and if found wanting, the courts have remedies uh, as the court uh, chose in this particular case. So um, it, it is, uh, I'm sure, um, galling in the extreme uh, when one considers uh, that weight, uh, that legislation, uh, and, uh, and the results uh, uh, that, uh, that are now before us uh, in, the, in the legislation. So uh, I, and the court was on to say, and again, I think it's important to just, I, I know I'm uh, quoting the court decision a lot, but I think it, it is important to have that detached perspective here, because uh, this is not uh, political rhetoric. This is, the, uh, this is the statement of the court. Um, they also, the, the judge goes on to speak of the, the benefits of the ability to negotiate working conditions, uh, that there are beyond this, the mere legal requirement of, uh, under the Charter of Freedom of Association. There are also recognized benefits uh, from, um, uh, from uh, the power to negotiate uh, collectively. And uh, paragraph 301, um, the judge, and I'm quoting from the court, 
The uh, historical evolution of collective bargaining as a protected right recognizes that there is a psychological benefit to workers to be able to collectively bargain over their working conditions, a benefit that goes beyond the economic benefits they might obtain. As held in Health Services at paragraph 86, recognition of the right to bargain collectively as, as part of the freedom to associate reaffirms the values of dignity, personal autonomy, equality, and democracy that are inherent in the Charter. So that's a fairly uh, strong and I would say dramatic statement by the court of the benefits of collective bargaining. Uh, and this is again not uh, political rhetoric. This is the decision of the considered decision of the BC Supreme Court, Madam Justice Griffin. Um, she goes on to say, Allowing workers a process to have a voice in their working conditions, regardless of the outcome, is thought to have a mediating or therapeutic impact on industrial conflict. It has been regarded as a form of industrial democracy, where the worker gains a sense of worth and freedom by ability to participate. And there's a, an article that's cited. It is only common sense that citizens who participate in lawful collective bargaining process, resulting in agreement that it, that it affects the way they earn their very livelihood will feel more like partners in employment relationship to the benefit uh, of the entire community. Um, and uh, um, the, uh, the judge was on to quote from the Corbin report, which was a report which was uh, commissioned back in the 90s about collective bargaining, but she goes on to say, uh, in paragraph 305. Conversely, the inability to participate in collective bargaining about one's working conditions can exacerbate industrial conflict. Workers who negotiated and relied on the give and take of negotiations and the result of collective agreement will likely feel betrayed, disrespected, and disheartened if their negotiated collective agreement is subsequently torn up by the state. So this is, uh, again, the uh, decision of the court, these are the words of the judge, these are not my words, these are not ideological words, this is not political rhetoric, this is the considered words of the judge in a legal decision of the BC Supreme Court. Workers who negotiate, I'm going to repeat it, workers who negotiate and relied on the give and take of negotiations and the resultant collective agreement will likely feel betrayed, disrespected and disheartened if their negotiated collective agreement is subsequently torn up by the state. And so one uh, can uh, uh, begin to, uh, uh, that uh, advice from the court has taken to heart, one can begin to understand uh, some of the uh, emotion that surrounds uh, the, the actions of the government, particularly uh, when uh, one hears from teachers uh, on these issues. And many of my colleagues have placed before the legislature uh, individual representations from teachers, and it's it's not surprising uh, that 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 is the result. But uh, it is uh, confirmed uh, on uh, on the on the in this uh, these observations uh, by the judge. You know, I'm um, afraid to so uncover things in, uh, up here. The uh, the other other part of the judgment that I want to quote is um, the uh, ref there's a reference in, and. Uh, a suggestion in the bill, uh, well, uh, uh, I should say more than a suggestion, it's a direction, that certain aspects of uh, the uh, proposed new collective agreement um, will be uh, uh, require that a mediator is appointed to assist the parties. That's the section six, uh, and it reads, the Minister of Education must appoint a mediator to assist the parties in settling the terms and conditions of a new collective agreement in accordance with this section. And this, uh, this judgment also has some comments uh, about um, mediation as well, um, which I think are uh, uh, intriguing given uh, the way in which uh, um, the uh, um, uh, the, the, this legislation relies upon uh, mediation. Um, and I want to uh, turn now to, I'm looking here for my place, uh, um, about uh, the, uh, the, the judge, the judge goes on to say, um, and I think this is a particularly uh, insightful comment that applies in this, uh, in this uh, case as well. Um, paragraph 367, the government has also not explained how legislation removing the right of 
employees to collectively bargain class size composition non enrolling ratio uh, non enrolling ratios workload and hours and days of work was logically linked to any ongoing labor dispute why was the legislation so broad why did it not provide for a traditional solution to solve a labor dispute if the legislation was due to urgency why was the legislation not structured as temporary it appears that the BCPSEA considered the other options were uh, available. Uh, as of August 30th, 2001, the BCPSEA's internal documents were considering do options available if they reached a bargaining impasse. The BCPSEA recognized that there are a number of traditional labor solutions under the Labor Relations Code, including code including mediation, the appointment of an industrial inquiry commission that could impose resolution processes such as final, final offer selection or arbitration, or a third party could be appointed with an authority to conclude a collective agreement. All of these traditional labor solutions would involve a process that would allow the BCTF to negotiate and argue its positions before a decision or recommendation was made by a party independent of the employer. Uh, BCPSEA recognized at this early stage of negotiations, an appointed third party would likely find the parties have not yet bargained uh, sufficiently. So. Um, there's again a recognition of the mechanisms available in the labor code, not necessary to enact legislation to impose mediation in the way with the very limited ambit uh, that uh, is imposed uh, by this bill, but the recognition of the, uh, the uh, traditional uh, labor remedies, and indeed uh, both sides in this dispute prior to the introduction of this legislation agreed that uh, a mediator ought to uh, intervene and uh, we're prepared to accommodate that, yet uh, that uh, offer uh, wasn't taken up um, uh, by the government uh, and uh, no mediator was appointed, that would be the Minister of Labour would have that discretion, uh, and instead the reaction of the government was to introduce uh, this particular piece of legislation. So um, it uh, Again, one has to contrast what is said uh, in the decision of the court uh, with uh, what, uh, what uh, the, uh, the actions of the government have been and the best advice from a very knowledgeable uh, justice of the Supreme Court appears to set aside very traditional labor remedies, uh, the full range of options, simply reject them and uh, barrel forward with uh, legislation which uh, very, na barely, uh, very narrowly circumscribes the, uh, the mediation that will be done here and one wonders whether there's a sincere commitment to mediation on the part of the government or whether it's simply uh, put in th uh, into the bill to provide some legal cover uh, if and when this particular legislation is, uh, is going to be challenged. Uh, legally in the courts, if that's the case, um, and uh, it is uh, it is very striking when one uh, looks at um, what was in the bill, uh, the original bill, um, um, uh, back in 2002. Uh, looks like I'm uh, about to be wound up, uh, but if I could turn to just page 16 of the decision, um, what the bill sets out there. Um, is a number of terms, um, but particularly, I think the most dramatic is um, the amendment. Uh, this was the section that was struck down, section eight, and section three, sub D, is restricting or regulating a board's uh, power to establish class size and class competition must not be included in a teacher's collective agreement. And what do we see uh, in this particular bill uh, before the House now? the identical provision. So, uh, and it goes on, uh, there's a other language which uh, uh, in section eight, back of the bill in 2002, makes, it all, makes its way very slowly all the way to the Supreme Court, struck down by the court, come back to the legislature, and the identical wording is before uh, the House here. Um, no wonder, uh, there is uh, cynicism uh, on the uh, in the public. No wonder there is cynicism uh, on the uh, in the uh, teachers uh, union, and no wonder bargaining is uh, is uh, so dysfunctional. When after that legal rebuke, the government feels that it can simply reenact 
the identical legislation after 10 years. So um, I, uh, I loathe to make any predictions, but I predict that this, uh, this legislation will uh, go back to court. I don't I think the government seems to be indifferent to that, uh, and it will be struck down. One can only hope and, uh, that uh, this, this approach uh, uh, might be abandoned and perhaps uh, a wiser approach might be taken. Uh, there, I think there's uh, still some time to do some bargaining, uh, and uh, one would hope that uh, that opportunity uh, might be taken up. So I, I think my time is about to expire. I had a number more, number more com further comments about the record of the BC Liberals over the last 10 years in education.